This monumental endeavor, taking place on the serene German island of female, stands as one of the largest construction projects in the world. With a staggering $7.5 billion budget, this remarkable engineering feat is set to revolutionize travel across an entire continent. Allow me to elaborate on this topic. The ScanMed corridor is a crucial component of the Trans-European Transport Network, extending over approximately 5,000 kilometers from Malta to Finland. Along its path, it traverses through the Alpine mountains and across the sea. However, there is an intriguing aspect to this route. When heading north, instead of taking a direct path to Sweden, travelers are required to take a 500-kilometer detour through Denmark. This diversion is necessitated by a body of water between Germany and Denmark known as the Female Belt. In the vicinity of the ScanMed corridor, there are remarkable engineering feats, including a 55-kilometer tunnel being constructed through a mountain in Austria and a monumental bridge and tunnel link between Denmark and Sweden. Despite these impressive endeavors, the seemingly unremarkable female belt has been a major challenge for engineers for many years, hindering their plans until recently. Currently, the female belt is the site of one of Europe's largest construction projects. The ambitious undertaking involves building the Finland Belt Tunnel between Denmark and Germany, which, despite its lack of widespread recognition, ranks among the most technologically advanced and massive projects globally. The scale of the endeavor can be compared to an aircraft hangar, demonstrating the transformative power of construction in shaping our world. This project reflects the unyielding determination of people to overcome obstacles and push the boundaries of engineering, thereby revolutionizing transportation connectivity between Scandinavia and Central Europe. Through such remarkable projects, we witness the impressive capability of construction to create significant changes and advancements in our modern world. Wow, this is truly amazing. There are rare instances in infrastructure where both engineering and architecture perfectly merge, and I experienced one of those moments on the Elizabeth Knight. It was beautifully executed, creating a lovely railway that left a lasting impression. Now, as I drive over the Harrison Bridge, I can't help but marvel at its engineering brilliance. Undoubtedly, it stands among the world's most remarkable feats of engineering and is arguably one of the finest infrastructure projects ever undertaken. This bridge serves as a vital link between two countries, connecting Denmark and Sweden, and marks the beginning of an incredible story that unfolded during its planning stages when Sweden had a grand vision in mind. At present, to travel from Sweden to Central Europe, one needs to take a train from Malmo over the Arizona crossing to Copenhagen. From there, passengers must switch to another train heading to Hamburg, Germany, and beyond. This journey can take up to five and a half hours on a high-speed train, and it's even slower for freight trains. As Germany is Sweden's second largest export market, the importance of finding a more efficient route cannot be overstated. Recognizing the need for a shortcut, the Swedish government proposed a collaborative effort with Denmark to address the challenge presented by the female belt, a stretch of water between Denmark and Sweden. Denmark was tasked with constructing the Arizona Bridge, and in return, they explored the possibility of creating a new fixed link in the area. Previous attempts to establish a railway between Hamburg and Copenhagen date back to the 19th century. However, significant progress only occurred in the 1960s with the construction of a bridge and a new ferry port at Puttgarden, which brought trains closer to the water's edge. Trains were then loaded onto ferries and transported across the female belt, which proved to be a time-consuming process. To improve transportation, plans were drawn up in 2008 for the female belt fixed link, aiming to replace the ferry with a permanent crossing featuring a four-lane motorway and two rail lines for both freight and high-speed passenger trains. Denmark agreed to fund the project, manage onshore businesses, and collect tolls. Germany, on the other hand, committed to upgrading the route from Puttgarden to Lübeck and building a shorter tunnel to the German mainland at Femarnsund. Initially, a cable-stayed bridge was considered, but due to the distance, challenging water depth, soil conditions, and the impact of prevailing winds, the idea was eventually dismissed. 
The alternative chosen was a bored tunnel under the female belt, which offers several advantages, including minimal disruption to the delicate ecosystem. But the project faced challenges related to its size, cost, and the need to construct multiple tunnels for railway, motorway, and access. Finally, the idea of an immersed tube tunnel was explored, where tunnel segments are built on land and then laid in a trench dug at the bottom of the seabed, connecting them as they go. This method proved to be the most suitable solution, and the Feymarn Belt Tunnel project commenced. The tunnel, when completed, will be an impressive feat of engineering, significantly improving the connectivity between Scandinavia and Central Europe. How on earth do you construct something of this magnitude? The project in question is the Feymarn Belt Tunnel, one of the largest construction sites in Europe, situated on the Danish side of the female belt. The project is managed by the Danish state-owned company, Femern AS. The scale of the site is enormous, with a village housing 1,300 workers, a specially built harbor for material deliveries, and the northern portal where the tunnel will emerge on the surface. The key element of this project is the massive factory where tunnel segments will be produced. The factory covers an area of half a million square meters, equivalent to around 200 football pitches. Each of the 89 concrete tunnel elements will be a staggering 220 meters long and 40 meters wide, designed to accommodate two railway tunnels, two motorway tunnels, and a service route side by side. The construction of the immersed tube tunnel works like this. The tunnel segments are built on land in the factory, consisting of nine segments each, which are then transported to the coast. The trench at the bottom of the seabed is dredged, and the tunnel elements are floated into place one by one. Each segment has to land within 15 millimeters of its target to ensure a watertight seal when connected. Once all the elements are in place, the trench is backfilled, and the tunnel is covered with gravel and sand to protect it. The Feymarn Belt Tunnel is a game changer, shortening the distance between Hamburg and Copenhagen, reducing travel time, and improving freight connections. The project is funded through EU subsidies, loans underwritten by the Danish state, and tolls from cars using the tunnel. It is projected to generate significant profits over its lifetime. Despite its positive impact on transportation, the project has faced opposition from environmental groups and residents concerned about its impact on the delicate ecosystem of the female belt and the island of Femarn. The construction process involves significant carbon emissions due to the large amounts of concrete used, although efforts are being made to minimize the environmental impact. While infrastructure projects of this scale can be controversial during their construction phase, history shows that they often become essential and revered structures that benefit society in the long run. The Feymarn Belt Tunnel is expected to become a defining part of European transportation and a vital link for millions of people for decades to come. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Stay tuned for our next video, and remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you next time.